गुड इवनिंग गाइज आई होप आई एम ऑडिबल एम आई ऑडिबल अ क्विक राउंड ऑफ यस great that is some great positive feedback to begin the session with uh the agenda for today is slightly complex uh, we've got two bull cats to cover in a single one and a half hour session uh, historically we've not managed to complete one full paper so it's going to be a challenge today so what i've done is i have reduced the number of questions that we'll be discussing uh, there is a target group of around 25 questions that we have in the slides those are the questions that we'll be discussing that is going to be the agenda for today uh, along with those questions i would highlight a couple of important strategies some important details that you should keep in mind while solving these questions so that is the agenda for today am i clear to everyone another round of yeses would do no harm to the world great uh, i i can see some uh, i can see some names which are the re regular defaulters who are here out here i can see sumit birangat so the guys who are regularly here are here today as well so that is good to see as well uh guys we begin with the, the first passage we begin with bullcat 5 so we'll be going in the reverse order uh bullcat 5 is what we are starting with we are we would be solving the first passage uh what i'll be doing today is i would be underlining a few lines in the passage and i would type in the question side by side the question would be typed in as after i underline that particular portion so what you guys have to do is you guys have to answer that question in the text box so that is what you will be doing along with the slides so that's an extra exercise that we will be carrying out today fair enough let's begin guys start reading slide number 1 start and i'll start underlining stuff i is quickly uh, socrates was effectively the teacher for aristotle and uh, aristotle he was his teacher and birangat you are absolutely correct with that uh, guys quickly define dystopia and utopia you've got like 5 seconds and time is already running out dystopia great utopia is an imaginary land it's the land of perfection nothing is wrong in an utopia dystopia is its complete antonym uh, some people who adopt a very negative world view uh, actually say that the world that we live in is dystopian in nature so that is what some people say next question for you guys what is socialism and what is anarchism now this particular question is important from the point of view of the passage define socialism define anarchism socialism and anarchism sahil anarchy is not one man rule uh, sorry preet it is not one man rule it means uh, anar uh, one man rule is autocracy anarchism is the philosophy wherein you do not believe in any governmental institution you believe in the complete overthrow of existing government institutions and you say that the world does not need governments shomik that's a good example to quote there actually uh, so that is anarchism 
socialism on the other hand is a different form of government wherein uh, the state becomes very very important and control rests in the hand of the state so one thing that you've got to learn and a quick round of yes is if you guys have done this already i just want a yes or a no answer all of you should be aware of the modern political and economic systems in the world so when i call modern political and economic systems i am going to list them down quickly these are two are given in the passage itself socialism anarchism capitalism liberalism neoliberalism conservatism uh, and so on autocracy anarchy blah 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 all these systems fascism is another one nitin absolutely correct so how many of you have gone uh, how many of you have researched all these terms those of you who have or who have researched majority of these terms quickly type in a y and those of you who haven't type in no so we get some nos we get a couple of animal farm lovers okay guys one learning from this passage before you actually solve the question itself super vital to be aware of all these things i like to call them isms socialism anarchism capitalism liberal liberalism etc etc make sure you prepare all these isms why do you need to do that for the simple reason it improves your comprehension by leaps and bounds so you've got to do this for sure those of you who are not you are cutting your own legs so kindly make sure that you do this fair enough no birangat you don't need to know the countries but you need to know the political context uh that is very very important when i say political context now additional homework for all of you today and some of you might want to kill me already uh the additional homework is when you study socialism and communism two countries that you are going to study about uh the former ussr secondly china and i'll add one more thirdly cuba so these are the three contexts in which you are going to study socialism and communism and if you want to do something more if you want to improve your global knowledge uh, try to find the relationship between socialism and south america as well so that is going to be uh, that is going to be very very beneficial so that is what you've got to do so all of you have read this slide i'm moving on to the next slide fair enough On the topic of Sheikh Guevara, how many of you have watched or read Motorcycle Diaries? Motorcycle Diaries. Okay, guys. Uh, Motorcycle Diaries is absolutely brilliant. It's a brilliant film to watch as well, and it's a very good book to read as well. So those of you who have some spare time, there's just two months left, so you should not have a lot of spare time. But in case you do, make sure you watch either the movie or read the book. Both of them are absolutely awesome. Uh, Karthik, this is just it'll take a five-minute quick search, not even a five-minute quick search. It's a one-minute search on Google. So. do that homework yourself i'll not slow down the session probably if we have time at the end of the session i'm going to list them out for you fair enough guys read slide number 2 now
uh, Sukriti, I'll not be able to help with the technical issues. Uh, the guys who are sitting at the back end will look, would have obviously looked into your message by now. So they'll get in touch with you. I would not be able to help you here because I am technically handicapped. Guys, there was a line that I highlighted for you guys. What is the meaning of that line? The line which was highlighted for you. Quickly type in the answers. Birangat is the most active one out here. Uh, when you look at such a line, what happens is what happens to me when I read something like this, all of a sudden when I read something like this, it strikes me instantaneously that this is the perfect material to make a question because of its hidden layers and its complexity. Uh, what are these layers? I'll just read this line with you guys so that you are able to understand the mindset of a question setter. It is this that makes socialism and anarchism important and it is this that makes them dangerous to those who batten consciously or unconsciously upon the evils of our present order of society. Uh, in the previous line, he was talking about how important political movements have grown out of socialism and anarchism, which means the it in this line which is right at the start talks about the importance of socialism and anarchism and how their influence is growing how they can lead to powerful political moments now what does this do this threatens people who does it threaten it threatens if you look at the pronouns it says it is this that makes them dangerous to those now he's referring to what those refers to the people who are currently indulged in maintaining the current systems, the current evils. They might be doing it consciously or unconsciously, but these individuals who are currently effectively the caretakers of the evils of society, they are threatened by anarchism and socialism. So this is the meaning of this particular line. And if you think closely, what does this line give you? It gives you awesome material to make questions. You can ask a possible implication of socialism and anarchism. You can ask an inference. You can ask effectively the meaning of the word batten. If anything can be done in this particular line. So always be on the lookout for such lines. Second question for you guys. How many F-O-R-E related words do you know? F-O-R-E. What does it mean? The root F-O-R-E. FORE refers to a uh, FORE refers to the future it's doing something beforehand doing something in advance FORE related words quickly FORE related words we've got one word foreboding which else forefather forward foreseen forsake any other word foretell etc etc Guys, always try to spot such roots and try to multiply your learning through these roots. Fair enough. Time to shift to the next slide.
one minute and quickly go through this slide. I hope slide three is visible to all of you. If you look at the last three or four lines of this paragraph, you'll see that there is a general sentiment that the author is trying to put across. Very important that you catch hold of these sentiments while reading. So here he is reflecting on a section of society which is not too active, which is which is actually a passive recipient, which simply accepts everything as it fades and continues to live in the kind of troubles that it has been living in. So these are general sentiments that you should catch while reading. Shifting to the next slide. Perfect, you are absolutely right, Ankita. Shift into the questions now. Question number 51. Answer for question number 51. The correct answer for this question is option number four. Option four is the correct answer here. Uh, this is a question which checks your vocabulary as well. What they've effectively done is in the paragraph that we studied in the slide before, those paragraphs, uh, the sentiments in those paragraphs have been expressed now in two word combinations. Uh, timid followers. Timid followers are weak followers. So this is a sentiment which is definitely implied. Altruistic iconoclasts. Iconoclasts are people who go against existing conventions. They break icons. Uh, altruistic for the benefit of mankind. Again, this is something which has been given in the passage. As self-interested semants. What are savants? Savants are pandits. Uh, someone who's very, very wise, someone who's a pandit, uh, that is what savants refers to. As self-interested savants, you'll go back and you'll find that this sentiment is not expressed in the 
passage this particular sentiment so this is the one sentiment which is missing as learned self seekers this is given there where he states that these people some of those who have knowledge they actually only work for their own benefits so that is why the correct answer in this case is option 4 uh with these questions uh, the ones which have these options 1 2 3 4 in roman numerals and then you've got to select one out of these as the answer guys kindly remember one very vital thing uh, these are time intensive questions when i mean time intensive questions relatively speaking in terms of verbal ability these would take slightly longer amount of time so in case you see a passage for example you saw this passage which has question number 51 and 52 in this format in the first attempt kindly avoid this because this would take a lot of time i am not saying leave these questions i am saying in the first attempt solve something else because you don't want to waste a lot of your time on this particular question type so that is something that you should avoid answers for question number 52 question number 52 answer अभी ये वाला क्वेश्चन टुच्चे वाला क्वेश्चन था मतलब बिल्कुल गिरा हुआ इज्जतलेस क्वेश्चन सो दोज ऑफ यू हू गेट दिस रॉन्ग यू गॉट टू पिक योर राइट हैंड एंड यू नो दी एक्सरसाइज सो दैट इज समथिंग दैट यू गॉट टू डू एच वन ऑफ यू शुड हैव गॉटन दिस क्वेश्चन राइट दिस इज अ सिंपल फैक्चुअल क्वेश्चन दिस इज actually a factual question the kinds that we used to get in class 10th or 9th and 8th and we used to get really happy those passages were so brilliant matlab ye event tab hua batao kab hua so that those kinds of passages this is something very very similar a factual question which you should have gotten right in case you did not very bad question number question number 53 guys answer for 53 now this question is based on that line that we spent a lot of time on those who consciously or unconsciously that line which talked about a few people battening the existing systems consciously or unconsciously those lines are rephrased those lines are paraphrased here in terms of option number 4 which states those who knowingly or unknowingly preserve the current status quo so option number 4 does that any doubt in this question 53 doubt any one of you no doubts perfect question number 54 answer Kamal ji has a doubt why not answer number 1 those who wish to work for their own selves uh this is a question which is based on a specific line which specifically states that it poses a threat to such and such people those people thus that definition is best met by option number 4 please go back to that line so that line directly states it in option that line directly correlates with option number four so that is why uh kashish you are absolutely right but uh here this is actually an important point that you've raised guys what is an inference how many of you believe an inference should should be the kind which is not stated it should be unstated how many of you believe that in case you do you can say a simple yes I did not see Birangat and Sumit, my two favorite students, in the answers. Uh, in this particular case, uh, the answer here would be, technically speaking, technically speaking, an inference should be unstated. So that is the technical way of looking at it. But there is a slight issue. 
uh, English is a fluid language. So at times what would happen is what is happening in this particular question wherein a line would be given to you. Effectively it would be paraphrased, paraphrased and it would be sold to you as an inference. So that may also happen at times. You're absolutely right, Karthik. At times, restatements might be sold as inferences because of the fluid nature here. An inference technically should be unstated, but that root to rule is not always followed. So that is why you've got to take it with a pinch of salt. At times, it would be an unstated one, but on a number of occasions, you'll see questions where an inference would actually not be an unstated one. So you might see that at times. Fair enough. It is very unpredictable, Ankur, and that is the beauty of English. And that is why your mock scores are unpredictable as well in English. They, in all probability, they'll be going up and down. That That is the whole issue. Uh, question number 54, guys. Answer for 54. Uh, this is a new type of question that was specifically asked last year where they simply said if you were to ask one pertinent or one important question to the author of the passage, what would it be? Guys, uh, what are the general directions or what are the general rules that you should keep in mind for this question type? Any one of you, just type in. You've got the answer, right? Because the question was relatively easy. Any one of you. What are the general rules that you should keep in mind for this question type? Uh, the first thing which a lot of you stated absolutely correctly, uh, number one, generally try to avoid things which have already been answered in the passage. So that is thing number one, because there's no point asking something which is already there in the passage. So for example, in this particular passage, if I take that example, if I look at option number three, what would be the ideals of a better world be adopted readily in human life? Now the passage certainly talks about that the world should be ideal, there should be socialism, anarchism, anarchism etc., etc., the positive impact. It talks about all those things, but it doesn't explicitly state what these ideals are. So which is the most important, which is the most relevant question here, what these ideals are. So one, try to bring in something which is related to the passage, yet is something new. Second thing, it should actually correlate with the most important points of the passage. You should always, always try to do that. Try to make sure that it correlates with the most significant aspect of the passage. The third thing, which might be applicable in some of the cases, which is another scenario that you might get for this question type. At times, toward the end of the passage, he might not provide you an explicit conclusion. He might not provide you an explicit summary. When he does not provide you an explicit conclusion or a summary, the subtle hint might be in this case, what next? So in that particular case, actually the question would revolve around what would be the final result outcome which the author is trying to imply. So that is something that you've got to remember in that particular case. So these are the things that you should keep in mind for this particular question type. I hope that is clear. Uh, we'll shift to the next slide now. Okay, guys, let's try to do something uh, uh, different with this passage. Generally, we take a lot of time for discussing RC passages. Let's flip the scenario here. We've got a to you've got a total of three minutes to read this passage. So I'll shift the slide in approximately a minute's time, and then you I will have only a minute or so for the answer. So let's try to quicken the process. No discussion on this passage. We'll quickly try to discuss it.
how many of you guys did not read it should i shift back there was no audio because i wasn't speaking the audio should be back uh, guys there is this line which has been underlined uh mujhe to aisa lagta hai aisi line padh ke na feeling aati hai ki isse question based hoga kyunki padh ke itni ulti si line hoti hai who explains this line for me what does somatic mean the meaning of the word somatic brilliant kashish absolutely perfect somatic is related to the body uh epis epistemic related to the subject of epistemology what does epistemic mean and it's related to the subject of epistemology I thought you had left Birangat. I was missing your answers. Uh, this particular line. What does this line mean? That what has happened is. Uh, allopathic medicines have replaced holistic medical models which is which were covering each and every aspect now since these have been replaced what has happened is somatic alienation which is the alienation of the body the body has been alienated from cures that is augmented that is supplanted that is given additional support by what epistemic alienation epistemology is the science of knowledge it effectively implies the whole corpus of knowledge so here epistemic uh, epistemic alienation refers to alienation of knowledge and now ancient wisdom has been left aside so this is why the problem has been compounded so this is the meaning of the sentence here it's a complicated sentence and uh, it's meant to challenge you and it's meant to test you so these are the kind of things that you should be expecting in your cat exam uh, read the slide
guys answer for 61 quickly answer for 61 anyone has any doubt in 61 or should I shift the correct answer in this case is option 2 Uh, this passage is based on the topic of ecofeminism. Uh, this topic, this is another ism that we are talking about. Uh, the topic is ecofeminism. Uh, Ecofeminism is based on the uh, combination of ecology and feminism. Feminism is a very, very popular movement. It took ground in France in the 1960s. Uh, it's another thing that you should definitely explore. Uh, in this particular case, this passage is based on ecofeminism, and ecofeminism made an appearance in CAT 2013. So, not sure whether the topic would again appear this year but one definite thing that we can keep in mind here is the fact that such topics appear in cat exams so ecofeminism was one of the topics in cat 2013 and that is why it is there in the mocks as well answers for question number 61 anyone has any doubt in this question or should i shift Guys, how many of you had a heavy lunch? In case you had a heavy lunch, type in a yes. And I can definitely see the reason was a lack of energy today. Generally, we've got so much energy. I actually miss half the messages which are typed because there is a flurry of messages. People are continuously typing, asking, discussing something and I'm not able to keep track. Today, I am sitting lazily here and I am getting very slow responses which is slowing me down as well. I also want to take a nap, my afternoon siesta. Uh, Guys, in this particular, did I have a heavy lunch? I always have a heavy lunch, Shomik. I am a Punjabi. Punjabis can't do without their regular dose of butter, ghee and butter chicken. So we can't live without that. That is our staple diet. Or it is Rajma Chawal. वो तो बिल्कुल सही बोले हो तुम अंकुर सुपरस्टार लगेगा तो यहां तो पता नहीं क्या होगा रॉकस्टार बन जाएगा अगला एनी वन एनी डाउट इन 61 क्वेश्चन नंबर 61 ग्रेट आई एम शिफ्टिंग टू द नेक्स्ट स्लाइड Answer for question number 62. Uh, Ankur, in the last question, there was a word purposefully non ignorant. So that word actually made that option incorrect. So that word purposely, that actually was the problem in option number four in question number 61. Uh, question number 62, option one or option two? The passage is a critical analysis of the history of birth control in developed nations or the passage tries to address the problem of why women lack the power to shape their own destinies. 
guys there is something known as the scope trap what is scope trap what is scope trap scope trap in english in for verbal ability questions is uh there is generally a point of discussion so for example in this particular passage the main points of discussion which are there birth control is a definite point its relationship to females and their position in society so which is another thing which is very very important so birth control and the position of women in society uh, these are the two main topics any option which talks about any question which talks about the overall theme of the passage should be based around these two statements now if i look very very carefully what does option 2 state it states the passage tries to address the problem of why women lack the power to shape their own destinies see this in our language of verbal teachers this is where the scope trap has been violated this has gone outside the scope of the passage uh are women not able to shape their own destinies the passage talks about the exploitation of women a woman not uh having the kind of status that they deserve to but option number 2 takes it to an altogether different level there is a specific context in the passage in which the passage is saying that women are not able to shape their destinies which is that con uh, which is that concept that context is birth control that context is reproduction so that is the context which is being talked about here option number 2 is too general it takes it to a level which is not justified in the given passage see the option number 1 is a what i label is a diplomatic answer option what does it say the passage is a critical analysis now the one thing that you've got to look into here is as soon as i say something like the passage is a critical analysis it's actually a redundant piece of statement uh it really doesn't help you it's a generic thing which is applicable almost everywhere so it says the passage is a critical analysis of the history of birth control in developed nations so what he effectively talks about as soon as he says it is a critical analysis what does it mean what does critical analysis means that means he is looking into the implications of birth control as well so now it becomes relevant it becomes a it carries our subject which is birth control and it also talks about effectively option number 1 means it talks about the implications of birth control and how it is treated which makes it very very relevant option number 2 is something uh, i'll i'll put it across as this way option number 2 is our reaction to the passage option number 2 is this is what we feel after reading the passage option number 2 is an opinion remember one very very crucial thing for answering verbal questions uh if i look at this particular question which is which one of the following is correct about the overall theme of the passage what kind of an answer i am looking forward to i am looking forward to a factual answer i am looking forward to what i am looking forward to a fact in the given case i do not want opinions passage option number 2 is an opinion tries to address the problem of why women lack uh the power to shape their own destinies he just goes beyond the scope of the passage it does not mention a developed nations b it does not mention birth control so that is why option number 2 is ruled out uh, always remember one simple rule pick options which are diplomatic in nature option number 2 is not a diplomatic answer option it's an extreme answer option so avoid those for questions such as main idea main point central point diplomatic answer options work best so those are the options that do the maximum justice for the question uh shifting to the next question now the author uses the word developed in the first paragraph to indicate which one of the following
uh, in order to solve this question which are the two options which you should throw out absolutely at the first instance you should throw out those options you should kill those options you should burn those options which are those two options the idiotic answer options one and three are those two options because he cannot be happy it was an indirect taunt when he used the word developed so he was saying that he was saying but he was effectively trying to imply that they call themselves developed but look at their views on birth control etc etc so one and three are those two options so now we are only left with option number two and four that is unhappy with the apparent idiocy of opposition to sex education or that is unhappy with the apparent paradox between the title and status of acceptance of birth control methods in the US and UK. Which option merges with our central idea of the passage? Option number four. So that is an option which goes with the central idea in this case. Sex education becomes too specific. Idiocy, apparent idiocy of opposition to sex education is not a sentiment which we can particularly derive directly. So that is why we take option number four. So now we are shifting to some non-RC questions. I guess we've had a couple of RCs. You should be bored. I am hundred. I hundred percent expect that. So let's shift to some non-RC questions. Sadvi, Sadvi or Sadvi, however it is pronounced, you've got to do one very simple thing. You should get more answers correct. So that would mean your score does not fluctuate. It's a simple solution. But I'm just kidding. Uh, it's a very, very complicated problem. Uh, we will not be able to, I will not be able to do justice to individual doubts such as these uh, here at this forum. Uh, question number 64. I actually love question number 64. Question 64, Thai's answer, 30 seconds. Just current, yes, you should always keep the central ideas at the back of your mind. The correct answer in this case is option number one. This is a good question for the simple reason more than one combination fits. So in case you've got to pick a particular combination of words that fits the sentence more than one combination would fit. You will derive a meaning. But now the next challenge is and generally this is the challenge that you have in cat exam questions as well which are based on sentence completion. You've got to pick the best combination. The technology geeks were fresh out of engineering college and being new to the world of application development were unwilling to dash the entire financial risk involved. So a simple word that should fit here, you should fit in a simple word. They were unwilling to take the entire financial risk. So that is something that goes in my mind. Then I read further. In order to dash their financial commitments involved, they decided to operate a B2B model. What is What does B2B mean? Meaning of B2B, absolutely perfect. B2B means business to business. In order to dash their financial commitment involved, they decided to operate a B2B model rather than launch indigenous products of their own, which means effectively is saying they took a safer approach. So if they're taking a safer approach, what are they trying to do? They are trying to safeguard their financial commitment. They are trying to minimize the risk. 
So these are two options that I have that A, they were unwilling to take the entire financial risk. Second thing is they were trying to minimize their financial risk. Now, which are the words which fit in here? Shoulder, sponsor, endure, adopt. First blank, which is the word which, which we should rule out immediately in this case? The first word that we should rule out. Sponsor does not fit. You cannot sponsor your financial risk. So second is endure. Again, does not really fit. Uh, were unwilling to adopt the entire financial risk involved. Adopt, even though you can make a certain sense in it with adopt and endure, they are not idiomatic usages in this particular case. So the best fit effectively becomes shoulder, but we will not be 100% sure. As soon as we look into the second blank, we become 100% sure. Fend off their financial commitment, they cannot fend it off. Fend it off means give up. Answer is option number one. Uh, fend off means give up, so they cannot give it up, so their financial commitment. So that is, we take it off the table. Safeguard their financial commitment, hedge or guard. This is where the meaning of hedge comes into the picture. What does hedge mean? It means to reduce your risk. Take up business practices which help you reduce risk. So in the given context of businesses, B2B model, etc., etc., the best fit is hedge. So this is a difficult question where you should know the meaning and usage of the word hedge. Otherwise, you will struggle with that, with this particular question. You should be clear with the meaning of hedge. That hedge means to minimize risks in business. So as soon as you know that, you would all of a sudden know that option number one is the best fit. Answer for question number 65, guys. We've got a lot of ground to cover, so we've got to move a little quicker here. Answer for question number 65. This was an easy one, easy in terms of the logic was not particularly tough. The only thing difficult with this question was the vocabulary. So, uh, In this particular question, the only thing which should have caused you harm or trouble was the vocabulary bit. And Paradigm absolutely gave it away. It's absolutely the most perfect fit. Sadhvi, you are correct. Fend off also means, uh, in a certain way, it also means to defend. But the problem in this case is that word sponsor would not really fit. So as a combination sponsor or fend off will not really go particularly here. They won't really fit. Uh, so that takes us to the next question. Guys, answer for this quickly. In this particular case, all these sentences are incorrect. I'm shifting to the next question because this is a particularly this was a particularly easy one. The error in statement four. What is the error in statement four? Absolutely correct and mole. Uh, it has to be its. Uh, why should it be its? Why should we use it instead of there? Nice reason. So, absolutely correct, Shamik. Union is a uh, 
is a collective noun here functioning as a single entity and it should be taken as singular uh, guys homework for today one very important piece of grammar related homework that you would go back home and do uh, a you would read about collective nouns what are collective nouns second thing that you are going to explore when are collective nouns singular when are collective nouns plural so collective nouns and when they are singular plural these are the things that you would have to do as part of your homework Guys, I am speaking now. I am introducing a new question. On the request of Ankur, you got one minute to solve this question. I'll just go back to the previous question to clear Supriti's doubt. Uh, Sukriti, in this case, it seems that whole administrative mechanism, in this case, uh, an article is missing. It should be, it seems that the whole administrative mechanism, the article the is very important here. So that is missing. It has to be supplied because we are, rep we are talking about a particular administrative mechanism. We are defining it's a particular one. It's a definite thing. So that is why we say, it seems that the whole administrative mechanism Guys, also try to cover the rules for article usage. Uh, these are very important from a cat point of view. Uh, when should we use a, when should we use an, when should we use the, etc, etc. So make sure you go through these rules as well. This is your small little homework for today. Answer for question number 75. Guys, one or three. Are you guys ready to kill each other for your answer? How many of you, I just underlined and circled a word. This is a Swedish. Uh, how many of you have had it and how is it pronounced? Sukriti has, Birangat has, great. Now I am I'm going into unknown territory here, uh, absolutely unknown territory. I am not 100% not sure about the pronunciation. It, it, I think it is creme brulee. Yeah, so Sukriti backs me up on that. So I'm sure that is correct now. So creme brulee, uh, it's an extremely tasty Swedish. So any one of you who has a sweet tooth, how many of you have sweet, sweet teeth? How many? How many of you have sweet teeth? Great. So all of you should have it. Anmol is a food blogger. Perfect. Uh, actually, my mother is an amazing cook and she actually makes creme brulee at home. So I have had the good fortune of having a lot of it at home and it is absolutely brilliant. The one that I've had at home has not been burnt. So some of you who've had ba bad experiences, you can come down to my place and I'll treat you for once for sure. Uh, guys, answer one or three. Back to the question. 
in this particular case the answer is option number 3 uh, the reason for these double standards is obvious one people tend to arrive at moral judgments using the rational methods third people tend to align their moralization with their own lifestyles now in this particular question you just need to remember one thing what does the paragraph say the paragraph simply says that whatever we are doing we think is right whatever someone else might be doing we if you are not in agreement with someone else we'll say he is not right he is not moral blah 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 but if we are doing something we don't care about it so we are not consistent so that means we, our methods are not rational we cannot say rational rational means what just current rational means that we are going by logic that we would have a consistent standard the paragraph implies an inconsistency which option does justify that inconsistency option number 3 does that so it's a good question it's a very good paragraph as well good one to read guys we've got another uh, passage on women op oppression so quickly go through this and give me the answer Question seventy six. Answer. Uh, this is a question that you actually solve using the last line of the paragraph what does the last line say it says further until women control their reproductive lives successful birth control is impossible as it foists responsibility on disempowered shoulders uh, what does this line mean the line simply means that there until women control their reproductive lives that means they are in totally in control of it birth control is not going to be possible as it foists that means it forces down responsibility on disempowered shoulders shoulders which are which actually do not have any power these people do not have any power so how can they carry out successful birth control so now which is the line which best continues this sentiment option number 1 which says therefore women's sexual empowerment is not only a feminist rhetoric that means it's not only a demand of the feminists but also an ecological imperative so that means it also affects society here it also affects ecology uh, how does it if how does it affect ecology it affects ecology by the dint of the fact that it affects reproduction so that is its ecological impact and that is why uh, the answer is option number 1 just karan wants another explanation for the last line i will give it another shot uh further until women control their reproductive lives that means reproduction whether to be pregnant or not is in the hands of a woman she decides whether i want it or not the passage says that uh women do not have this power they are not in total control he says jab tak ye power nahi aayegi na tab tak birth control is impossible it is not 
पॉसिबल बर्थ कंट्रोल वाई बिकॉज अगर जिसके पास पावर ही नहीं है जो डिसम्पावर्ड है उसके ऊपर तुम ये रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी कैसे फेंक सकते हो यू कैन नॉट गिव दैट रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी टू दैट पर्सन सो दैट इज वॉट द लास्ट लाइन से इज नाउ हाउ इज दिस कैरी फॉरवर्ड इट इज कैरी फॉरवर्ड बाय ऑप्शन नंबर वन विच इज वुमेन एम्पावरमेंट इज नॉट अबाउट फेमिनिज्म ओनली इट्स ऑल्सो अबाउट इकोलॉजिकल इंपेरेटिव सो दैट इज द आंसर ऑप्शन नंबर टू गिरीश therefore women's sexual empowerment assumes a new found importance for reasons which are less obvious to male chauvinists uh he says in this particular line women's sexual empowerment assumes a new found importance for reasons which are less obvious to male chauvinists uh which particular part of the paragraph had the implication towards male chauvinism yes he definitely talks about the fact that males control females but he does not talk about the fact that they maintain a derogatory attitude towards them uh yes sexually they are disempowered but are males all males chauvinists is that kind of a sentiment is it implied in the passage no it is not so that is a sentiment that we cannot directly correlate with the given paragraph and that is why option number 2 is ruled out in this particular case so that is why we are ruling out option number 2 uh guys we move on to bullcat 4 now uh Sukriti, you are absolutely right in this particular case. But one thing that you've got to always do is you've got to eliminate answer options. So I'll go back to the last slide for a minute. I'll give one extra minute to this question. Option two is ruled out because of shamanism. Option three, therefore, women's sexual empowerment finds resonance in feminist literature. Again, feminist literature is not mentioned in this particular paragraph. I am not sure whether I should extend it or not. fourth surprisingly women have always taken upon themselves the responsibility of ensuring contraceptive measures now this cannot be done here because for the simple reason he is saying they are sexually disempowered so you cannot ensure that they have measures of empowerment with them so for this particular question what do you use you use elimination three options options 2 3 4 do not fit in this given case i always recommend and i will continue recommending for verbal try to eliminate answer options do not try to select generally how do we solve a verbal ability question so this is my standard dialogue so i'm just repeating it we read the question we read the answer options and then one particular option say for example in this case option number 3 it says to us wo hame na badi achhi lagti hai answer option we are attracted to the option pad ke lagta hai yaar yahi hai answer theek hai so as soon as we get that feeling ki answer yahi hai we stop our logical process and what do we do on the basis of feelings we select an answer option try to reduce that to an absolute minimum you will not be able to eliminate this but try to reduce it do not select answers always try to eliminate answer options so that is one very very vital tip for verbal ability for increasing accuracy so i think sadvi had a doubt earlier as well so probably this would help you as well uh this is just a simple one simple additional tip for you to remember try to eliminate answer options rather than selecting one answer option cancel three options select then only select the last which is remaining try to do that process will increase your accuracy might reduce your attempt by a couple of questions but would definitely increase your accuracy is quickly answer for this question now try to solve this solve this by elimination one option which is there which should generally not be there is none of these which makes this question very tricky guys who is a philologist 
help Kashish here? Who is a philologist? Kashish, how do you define a philologist? Definition for a philologist. The exact dictionary definition. Guys, any one of you run a quick Google search and just quickly paste the exact definition of philologist. Exact dictionary definition. Quickly do that for me. You will be of great help. Great, so we've got a lot of people who are willing to help here. So that shows that you are all good people. Guys, philology, how do we actually effectively condense this one paragraph into uh, one simple line? Uh, philology is the study of language in written historical sources. It is a combination of literary criticism, history, linguistics. It is more commonly defined as the study of literary texts and written records, the establishment of their authenticity and their form and the determination of their meaning. So effectively what he is implying is Kashish in this particular case is that philology is not particularly about the structure of language. It is about what? It is about all possible contexts of the language which have made a previous appearance. So that can be literary criticism, history, linguistics, the overall development and checking whether that is factually correct or not. So it's got that kind of a relationship. On the other hand, semantics is a very particular science. Semantics is all about language structures. So for example, uh, how are vowels used? How do they impact the mind? Or say, how does the ing combination of the three letters ing, how does this repeat in language? How is it created? The technical aspects for its usage. So those are semantics. So those are particular technicals with technical aspects of words. Uh, philology on the other hand is about the historical aspect of the language. How did it develop? How did that knowledge come into existence? So it is not technical in nature. So that will be the differentiation. Guys coming back to the question. Question number two. Answer in this particular case. Option number one. Direct easy answer. How many of you got this answer right? Only three people. Where have the others disappeared? You seem to have left me. Great guys. So uh, most of you got it right. So I'm anyone any doubt in this question? Yeah, absolutely right. Thinking fast and slow is the title of the book. Guys, answer for this question quickly. This is another easy question that you should have got right. How many of you got it right? Great, almost everyone has got it right. So I am shifting to the next question. Perfect, brilliant actually. Answer for this question, I think then we'll have an RC. Option one or option four, guys, quickly. 
why not option number 1 guys kindly read the first uh, the last line of the paragraph very very closely as marcel proust famously said consists not in seeing new sights but in looking with new eyes he specifically states that it's not about looking at new things so if it is not about looking at new things what should you be looking at you should be looking at old things so where are those old things those are there in option number 4 and that is why the correct answer is option 4 and not option 1 in this particular case so that one particular line the real voyage of discovery consists not in seeing new sights that is the one that drives this question so the most important aspect in this particular question so in case you missed it it might have caused you a lot of pain why not 5 sadvi i am sorry okay option number 1 uh, see the last line says the real voyage of discovery consists not in seeing new sights so the correct answer option cannot be about new sights what does it have to be about it has to be about old sights option number 1 says and then with the new perspectives the new sights appear so much more thought provoking but then that would contradict the paragraph itself the paragraph is saying that new sights are not important so what should i be talking about i should be talking about old sights where do i find that i find that in option number 4 and of course once you have new eyes even the old sights even your home becomes something different so that is why the correct answer is option 4 guys 15 seconds to answer this should it be option 1 or should it be 3 option 1 3 and 4 it has to be option number 1 he cannot be perturbed or distraught uh disney is not he is not scared he is not afraid of anyone he says we can lick them all with quality that means he can kick their ass with quality he is that confident so if he is that confident which is the word that should fit cavalier is the word which fits best in this case uh perturbed and distraught would mean he is very very tense if he had said something like we will not be able to meet them and meet them in our quality then he would have been perturbed but in the given case he is definitely not perturbed he is cavalier here fine guys we are up to the last passage for today So this is the last passage that we'll be solving. Quickly read this slide. I actually loved this passage when I read it.
read this slide guys should i shift to the next The last paragraph says, just in case anyone reading this thinks that I am making a political case against right-wing political operatives. Uh, guys, another very, very important homework. Please go and explore the wings of politics. Go and explore their policies and what do they effectively imply. Right wing actually generally implies people who believe in God. The policies of the right wing are they believe in God, A. And the second thing is they definitely believe uh, in uh, capitalism. They are very, very capitalist. Left wing, on the other hand, is very socialist in nature and does not believe in God. So that's the difference. Now, keeping that in mind, just in case anyone reading this thinks that I am making a political case against right wing political operatives. Why does he say that? He simply says that because he's talking about global warming and how we should be careful with our development. So being against development is being against capitalism in a certain way. So he says, I'm not against right wing political operatives. I can readily make the same argument against those on the left who seek to block the research and production of genetically modified crops. He's saying, I am on the side of both. If the left-wing scientists are trying to stop the development of genetically modified products, I am against those as well. Why is he against those? Which have the potential to feed millions of starving people by using specious arguments about the science being incomplete. Partisans are always welcome. Partisans are different parties who have different opinions, are welcome to argue the various sides of those issues, but they are being deceitful when they use a researcher's expression of honest doubt about a particular detail to suggest that that science is unreliable. He is effectively saying that Science can be doubtful. You cannot be 100% sure, but you cannot use that doubt to stop scientific development. You cannot say, since science is 100% sure, we will not do it. He's saying you have to trust science and go ahead with it. There might be unforeseen circumstances, but at the end of the day, it is better to trust science. So that is what he implies in the last paragraph. Questions now. The purpose of the last paragraph is to answer guys, I have already explained it. Suggest that the inability to find evidence, which basically means that inability to prove something 100% correct does not make the defendant guilty. Here he is using indirect language to prove his point. It is an indirect way of saying that even though science might not prove it, prove things conclusively, you still cannot rule it out. You cannot say I'm not going to use science. So that is something that should not be done. So that is what is suggested by this particular question. Those of you who've given option two as the answer, please go and check up the word meanings. Then you will know why did you make the mistake. Girish, kindly do that. Question number 15. In the context of the passage, fill in the blanks. Dash is a victory in science and that is precisely what makes it so powerful. Ambiguity or revision? Or certitude? Certitude cannot be the answer. 
certitude is being 100% sure he says that science is never 100% sure so you should leave that out of the window lucidity is being absolutely clear again synonym for certitude so we leave it out ambiguity and revision which is the central aspect which makes science appealing its ability to revise and correct itself ambiguity means being doubtful see being doubtful does not help us in this case revision is a victory of science that means the ability to correct itself that is a victory in science that is the positive quality so that is why the correct answer is option number 3 uh 16th answer which field of study would you expect to give you a complete description of a phenomena see in this given passage if i ask you another question what is the central idea of the passage what is the central idea of the passage guys quickly type in central idea the central idea is that science even though it can be doubtful is far better than going with subjects and with going with the kind of knowledge which is deterministic in nature he is saying don't fall into the trap of going behind people who are 100% certain that who will go, go and tell you the charlatans who will tell this is how this thing happens and they would not base themselves on science they would use subjects such as astrology yaar wohi baat hai na jaise pandit haath dekh ke aapko future bata deta hai that is what he is implying here he is trying to point out the charlatans uh, so the three subjects that we leave out in this case is are the ones which are based on knowledge which are the ones which are based on knowledge sociology archaeology and psychology these are three sciences so we got to trust them which is the only thing which gives you a complete which can give you a complete answer astrology because that is what he is implying here in this particular case the other three subjects they would always re- leave a realm of doubt so that is what is implied in the passage and that is why the answer is option number 4 in this particular case so guys that brings us to an end for today's session uh we've discussed about 20 questions today uh we've discussed a few important things a quick recap you've got a few grammar related tasks you've got to explore left wing right wing politics you've got to explore the isms you've got to keep in mind that you've got to eliminate options rather than selecting answer options so this is a quick brief recap of the major points that we've discussed in today's session i hope these were helpful to you and you can benefit from this lecture harman you will absolutely get a recording of this lecture for sure you would do that and this brings us to a close today anyone would like to answer jaskaran's question what does what is the difference between distinctive and characteristics kashish for ift verbal a couple of things that you've got to focus on specifically a there is a greater number of vocabulary questions in ift verbal one second thing the passages are really wrong so in case you are in the habit of solving short passages try to solve a few long passages as well relatively you will get longer passages third thing please explore things such as figures of speech ift generally asks question on those for example what are metaphor simile uh etc etc so try to do that try to explore all those things uh word usage questions uh word usage questions biranga the problem is you really cannot practice them those are reading based questions so if you get them right celebrate party if you get them wrong well don't feel too sad about it because most of the world gets them wrong so don't uh, stress yourself they are extremely ir- irritating they are the worst possible question type they should not be there in the exam but they've been there for the last 6 7 8 years so we can't do absolutely anything about it so i have to vacate the room now so we've come to a close for today thank you all uh, we'll catch up very soon and uh, jaskaran is not going to allow me to go 
guys difference between distinctive and characteristic last question for today distinctive and characteristic distinctive is something which stands out so that is the distinctive quality of that particular thing characteristics are the features of a particular thing so anything distinct you can put it this way uh distinctive is the most obvious characteristic feature of something it is the one which stands out so that is your answer just karan so that brings us to a close today thank you very much good